Unlike other countries, most state-run museums and places of cultural interest in England are free of charge to visit. Museums are an important aspect of English culture, and most sites and towns have a few museums and art galleries. The British Museum, in the Bloomsbury area of London, England, is a public institution dedicated to human history, art and culture. Its permanent collection of some 8 million works is among the largest and most comprehensive in existence, having been widely collected during the era of the British Empire. It documents the story of human culture from its beginnings to the present. It was the first public national museum in the world. British Museum History Although today principally a museum of cultural art objects and antiquities, the British Museum was founded as a universal museum. Its foundations lie in the will of the Irish physician and naturalist, Sir Hans Sloane, born on 1660 and died 1753, he was a London-based doctor and scientist, from Ulster. During the course of his lifetime, Sloan gathered a large collection of curiosities, consisted of around 71,000 objects of all kinds, including some 40,000 printed books, 7,000 manuscripts, extensive natural history specimens, including 337 volumes of dried plants, prints and drawings, including those by Albrecht Dürer, and antiquities from Sudan, Egypt, Greece, Rome, the ancient Near and Far East and the Americas. The Foundation of British Museum, in 1753 On 7 June, 1753, King George II, gave his royal assent to the Act of Parliament, which established the British Museum. The British Museum Act in 1753, also added two other libraries to the Sloan Collection, namely the Cottonian Library, assembled by Sir Robert Cotton, dating back to Elizabethan times, and the Harleian Library the collection of the Earls of Oxford. They were joined in 1757, by the old Royal Library, now the Royal Manuscripts, assembled by various British monarchs. Together these four foundation collections included many of the most treasured books now in the British Library, including the Lindisfarne Gospels, and the sole surviving manuscript of Beowulf. The British Museum, was the first of a new kind of national museum, belonging to neither church, nor king, freely open to the public, and aiming to collect everything. Sloane's collection, while including a vast miscellany of objects, tended to reflect his scientific interests. The addition of the Cotton and Harley manuscripts, introduced a literary and antiquarian element, and meant that the British Museum, now, became both national museum and library. Cabinet of Curiosities, from 1753 to 1778 The body of trustees decided on a converted 17th century mansion, Montague House, as a location for the museum, which it bought from the Montague family, for £20,000. The trustees rejected Buckingham House, on the site now occupied by Buckingham Palace, on the grounds of cost and the unsuitability of its location. With the acquisition of Montague House, the first exhibition galleries and reading room for scholars, opened on 15 January 1759. At this time, the largest parts of collection were the library, which took up the majority of the rooms on the ground floor of Montague House, and the natural history objects, which took up an entire wing, on the second state story of the building. In 1763, the trustees of the British Museum, under the influence of Peter Collinson and William Watson, employed the former student of Carl Linnaeus, Daniel Solander, to reclassify the natural history collection, according to the Linnean system, thereby making the museum a public centre of learning, accessible to the full range of European natural historians. The predominance of natural history, books and manuscripts, began to lessen when in 1772, the museum acquired for £8,410, its first significant antiquities in Sir William Hamilton's first collection of Greek vases. The British Museum from 1778 to 1800 From 1778, a display of objects from the South Seas, brought back from the round-the-world voyages, of Captain James Cook, 
and the travels of other explorers fascinated visitors, with a glimpse of previously unknown lands. The bequest of a collection of books, engraved gems, coins, prints and drawings by Clayton Mordaunt and Crater Road, in 1800, did much to raise the museum's reputation, but Montague House, became increasingly crowded and decrepit, and it was apparent, that it would be unable to cope with further expansion. The British Museum growth and change from 1800, to 1825. In the early 19th century, the foundations for the extensive collection of sculpture began to be laid, and Greek, Roman and Egyptian artifacts dominated the antiquities displays. After the defeat of the French campaign, in the Battle of the Nile, in 1801, the British Museum acquired more Egyptian sculptures, and in 1802, King George III, presented the Rosetta Stone, key to the deciphering of hieroglyphs. Gifts and purchases from Henry Salt, the British Consul General in Egypt, beginning with the colossal bust of Ramesses II, in 1818, laid the foundations of the collection of Egyptian monumental sculpture. In 1806, Thomas Bruce, 7th Earl of Elgin, ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, from 1799 to 1803, removed the large collection of marble sculptures from the Parthenon, on the Acropolis in Athens, and transferred them to the UK. In 1816, these masterpieces of Western art, were acquired by the British Museum, by Act of Parliament, and deposited in the museum thereafter. In 1802, a buildings committee was set up to plan for expansion of the museum, and further highlighted by the donation, in 1822, of the King's Library, personal library of King George III, comprising 65,000 volumes, 19,000 pamphlets, maps, charts and topographical drawings. This is the complete history of British Museum Part 1. Don't forget to like and subscribe our channel.